It was 1940. Novelist John Steinbeck and his pal, marine biologist Ed Ricketts, took the Western Flyer on a 4,000-mile voyage that was part scientific expedition and part adventure. The trip is chronicled in a log from the Sea of Cortez. We have concluded that all collecting trips to fairly unknown regions should be made twice, once to make mistakes and once to correct them. Steinbeck and Ricketts never did make that return trip, but this spring, another group has. Chuck Baxter is overturning rocks on a small island in the middle of the Sea of Cortez. Uh, Steinbeck writes with great passion about the difficulty of collecting uh, polyclad flatworms. Beneath the shimmering surface is a dazzling array of starfish, and crabs, and snails, and sponges. Baxter and others wading in the tide pools believe this is one of the sites visited 64 years ago. In retracing that journey, the expedition will be studying changes over six decades. It's a remarkable opportunity in the relatively young field of marine ecology, where there is scant historical information. I love the different covers that appear on various editions of books, various foreign editions, American editions. This one, for instance, looks like the man is being attacked by a shark, so it looks like an adventurous sea story rather than a scientific expedition. Susan Schillinglaw is the director at the Center for Steinbeck Studies at San Jose State University. Steinbeck had finished The Grapes of Wrath in 1939. He'd been physically exhausted by writing the book. He did not want to write novels anymore, and he also decided he'd become a scientist. For Ricketts, I think he needed a new project. He'd published Between Pacific Tribes. I think he needed something to do, something to look forward to. He'd had a very disastrous love affair, and my theory is that you know, Steinbeck wanted to lift his friend out of his sort of doldrums, and so to plan a trip was the very thing. In a nod to the past, the ship being readied for departure this morning could be a stand-in for the Western Flyer that took Steinbeck and Ricketts. But these scientists and adventurers will be testing a new concept gaining currency in marine ecology. So much marine life has disappeared for so long, we cannot remember what has been lost. We're also going to expand their research along the Pacific and in some roadless areas to see those, those differences and impacts into, in a way, complete uh, what they started, which was a, to, an understanding of the biogeography, the distribution of species uh, around there. The big fish and abundant sea life in the Sea of Cortez, or officially the Gulf of California, has long attracted fishermen and scientists and explorers such as Jacques Cousteau, who called it the Aquarium of the World. But over the past three decades, there has been a stunning decline of sea life, according to scientists, a continual slide that has shaken the notion that this seemingly inexhaustible sea is, well, exhausting. It's hard to find the black sea bass, goliath groupers, the giant manta ray, the frenzied school of yellow-tailed jacks, the circling columns of hammerhead sharks. Such declines are not unique to the Sea of Cortez. The same tragic story is unfolding in many other places in the world's oceans. But it's all the more surprising here, a place known for such richness. Then the engine started and we moved toward Conception Bay. This day, a little wind blew over the ultramarine water. The swordfish, in great numbers, jumped and played about us. This collaboration between a great scientist and a great novelist provided something that has become valuable over the years, a written record, a scientific baseline that reaches much farther into history than is often the case in marine science. The Puerto Escondido area, they describe that is one of the richest and most diverse habitats that they had sampled, and that if they stayed there long enough, they could document virtually every species in the Panamic province there. But we saw nothing like that. The band of scientists discovered that the log contains many clues to what used to be in the Sea of Cortez, a region that has, for the last six decades, come under ever-increasing pressure from fishing. Fernando Arcas has a sense of that. He was a professional fishing guide until 20 years ago, 
when he dedicated himself to conservation. We have the conditions to make this happen again, to have these incredible fisheries. But not now, the problem is the man with all this power, with all this big ship, with all this new technology, where the fish can hide now? What are we doing in the ocean? Just nothing. Just go and catch and catch and catch and think that we will have fish forever here. And this is a lie. Unless we're Jesus Christ and we can divide the loaves of bread, it's very simple. If you just keep eating and eating and eating, they're gone. Jeremy Jackson, a professor at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, says most scientific studies fall victim to short-sightedness. Instead of figuring out changes over time from a baseline in the past, people shift the baseline closer to the present and get only a partial picture. Shifting baselines is very simply is declining standards. Everybody thinks that natural is the way the world was when they were a kid. And unnatural is everything that happens afterwards. But because we don't believe our own data, and because we have this arrogance of the present that we think what we see is the best, we shift the baseline. Depende. So depending on how good of how good of a harponeer you were, would uh, would determine how long your line was. Chico Murillo's stories also serve as a baseline of sorts. His father taught him fishing in the early 1940s. He remembers hunting enormous sharks, their numbers so thick they floated on the surface as if basking in the sun. Many people have told me that there's plenty of fish, but I know that to be a lie because I lived it in those years. It truly saddens me that a lot of the fishers have no foresight and that's the only thing that really matters to them is having some money in their pocket and not really think about what's to come and what lies ahead for the fishers and communities in Baja. We have found that in the last 30 years there has been a dramatic decline in the abundance of large species such as sharks and groupers. Sala and his team have just completed a six-year study of the Gulf. They found that some heavily exploited fish have disappeared from some areas. They also found an alarming decline in the numbers and size of other fish. The bottom trawlers and the shark hunters of the foreign fleets that once plundered this region have been booted from these waters. In their place are a fleet of Mexican shrimp trawlers, tuna boats, and thousands of small skiffs called pongas. So the government provided these subsidies, including boats and engines and gillnets to the fishermen. And the massive introduction of gillnets in the early 80s has been probably the major cause of the decline of the coastal species in the Gulf of California. The fishermen pulling in their nets near San Lucas Cove now hunt for small fish, once used primarily for bait, fish they never would have bothered with in the past, when giant groupers, yellowtail jacks, and sharks were plentiful. The worst thing that man <laughs> ever made to destroy the ocean are these, uh, these kind of nets. They have two problems. One is that they use a change on the bottom because they need to hit the bottom of the ocean, so the stream jumps and then they are caught by the net. And the other is that around the 90 percent of all the creatures that they catch is bycatch. They don't use it. They just discard all these uh, animals, all these fish dead to the water. The Sea of Cortez is still a wonderful place. And the good news is that, as far as we know, no species have uh, become extinct. So there is still a chance. We still have time to recover the abundance of these species. And there are still a few places, remote and relatively free from intense fishing pressure, which are a reminder of what that aquarium was. The Gus D will return from this voyage with two months of data. Patterns will emerge and conclusions will be drawn. The value to men like Chuck Baxter cannot be measured. I have immensely enjoyed myself on this trip, bent over counting quadrats with flies flying in your nose and in your ears is more fun than you can really express to a person who hasn't done it. <laughs> this is Ken Weiss, Los Angeles Times.